How close were you and Tupac? We was real close. Uh, you know, we both Gemini's. You know what I'm saying? You, you did uh, Ambitions of a Rider. Yeah. That was, and that was the first song on Tupac's... That was the first song we All did Eyes when he came me. to Death Row. Okay, so he, he got out of jail. Got out of jail. Signed to Death Row. Got off the plane. Got off the plane. We like, what up? What up? <laughs> went we, to the studio. No, we went to go eat. Went to go eat. At Monty's. Okay, at Monty's. And then we went to Can Air. Went to Can Am Studios. And then I had the five songs with the hooks already on there. And then he said he liked that one. So he went in there and redid the Ambitions of a Rider hook. Oh, so you already had the hook written? Yeah. Oh, because so you, you know that hook come from Snoop, you know, like back in the days when he had on Stranded on Death Row. That, uh, I'm not flagging, but I'm just, just sagging. sagging. I don't deny it. Oh, same, same saying? cadence. Yeah, 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 just different words, you know, because I had the beat. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. You know what I mean? So he came in there and knocked them five out. And I was like, damn. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Well, was he the fastest working rapper you'd ever seen? Yeah, because he was serious. And that made us get on our job a little bit more. You know what I'm saying? OK. So from then on, it was just knocked him out. And then DJ Quick came in there and mixed him for me. Right. Yeah, Quick was the, was the main DJ during that time. Yeah. Did you know how big? Uh, because, I, I, I mean, Tupac was big. We knew Tupac beforehand, though. You know, okay. we did a lot of work with Tupac before he was on Death Row. When he did Juice, we used to go over his house when he oh. had the laser disc. Right. We was watching it over there. Like, hey, come check my movie out. You know what I mean? So, you know, we was already hooked up. We could see old MTV clips and stuff like that from when we was real young. You know what I'm saying? So, uh -huh. yeah. And okay. then, you know, I got him his first big old check. It was like $30,000 from Death Row. When we did uh, hard on the nigga, but we didn't even put it on murder was the case. Uh -huh. And then we did gridlock, and then I found that song in the vault, and then we put it on there. But he had got paid for that song, that we got him paid for that song, and we didn't even use it. Right, that was on the murder. Yeah, because he showed up on the murder was the case soundtrack before yeah, I mean, he, he was, was on the, before he was, he was on death row. Yeah, he was on Interscope. Yeah. Okay. How did things change in death row when when Tupac showed up? It was more. Shit, we pushing, pushing even harder, you know what I'm saying? So that's what it was, pushing hard. Okay. And hardly pushing. Um, you did Two of America's Most Wanted. Yeah. How did that song come together? I had a beat and a hook. I was going to sell it to Drew Down. <laughs> okay. But then. <laughs> I can see Drew Down on he that. He went to jail or something. So <laughs> I had, uh, that was that same night that Tupac was coming into town. Okay. And then uh, Snoop had came to the studio in the middle of the night. Like everything had just getting off the plane, going to the studio, dropping one song, doing another song, then doing two of America one and Snoop walking in the door. Okay, like so. It all went time wise, you know what I'm saying? Like click, clock, clock, all right, Snoop walking at three, we done that thing. We doing, I ain't mad at you at five in the morning. By six in the morning, we was gone. So you did Vicious of a Rider, America's Most Wanted, I Ain't Mad At You. Scandalous. Scandalous. I got my mind made up. Got my mind made up. Uh, all, all the other rappers, like Method Man and Red Method Man? Method Man, we did that at my house. It was, it was originally me, Rage, Method Man, Red Man, and Inspector Deck. Okay. But then Rage didn't want to, she didn't want to bust on it with all the dudes on there like that. So I took it to Dr. Dre house, and then he had mixed it, and Tupac came and heard it. Was Dre working a lot on the on the Tupac album, All Eyes On Me? He was working on his album, but you know, when it's album time, we take whatever we got and contribute to let you hear what we got and to put it into that project. Okay. So Tupac album come out, uh, All Eyes On Me. Because we had just finished the dog food album. Yeah. So when Tupac came out, we started on his album, which we didn't really get enough time to focus on the dog pound album. It just went three million, so we was like, you know what I'm saying? So we started on that. Cause you, I'm a producer, so I really was just producing yeah. albums. I really wasn't touring and nothing. You know what I'm saying? We didn't really start touring until, you know, after all that. Okay. Um, well, you know, when the Dog Food album came out, that was the, f that actually came out independent, right? Priority, Interscope. Okay. Well, why, you know, cause a lot of people, they talk about, um, Mac Miller's album going number one independent, and they always mention the Dog Food album before his. Yeah. So that that was considered an independent album, technically. Yeah. Independent, yeah. So so we got it, paid off that album. We was balling. 
I bet. I was 17, had millions. Yeah, I you know, and then I learned that's how you learn your business taxes. And, you know, I remember one time I was just had about got a check for like seventy thousand. Went to the bank, was going to let it cash, and next day I was going to buy a pound. And the money was on hold for taxes for thirty thousand, so I had to sign over that. So I knew about I right, pay these taxes and this money. Exactly. In my name, so that's when I learned to get a company name. Well, I, I remember that that Dog Pond album, that was one of the best sounding albums at the time. That shit well, sounded so, so crisp. You know, you know what I'm talking about? It seemed like the technology almost, yeah, you we know was, what I mean? We was, you know, we was uh, playing instruments on them albums, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And uh, recreating and making it sound good with the quality, you know what I'm saying? Like I said before, uh, Dr. Dre's second student into this music shit, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it was Dr. Dre and... The Chronic, then was Daz, the Dog Pound, and whoever else, and Mill Man, and whoever, you know, all them other, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So I learned the quality of music and, you know, between a wave and an MP3. At what point did Dre leave Death Row? Because yeah. Tupac was already out. After that. Yeah, after Tupac's album was you know, was already released, you know, uh, California Love came out, it was yeah, huge. Yeah, was, was working song. on the second one. Okay. You know, so, and um, I think when he did that, what's that, No Diggity? Yeah. Around that time. Around that time. I mean, from your point of view, why did Dre leave Death Row? Shit, I really don't know. Okay. You know, we was just working, we was just young, we was just wondering why he left, you know what I'm saying? So, okay. But, but Tupac was still there, so, the energy was still real high. Yeah, the energy was hot. My thing was why Dr. Dre left. Probably gotta ask Michelle Lay. I asked Michelle Lay. She probably the big cause of it. You think Dre left? I don't want to start no controversy. <laughs> well, I interviewed Michelle Lay. Uh... I mean, I seen that shit. You know what I'm saying? She fucked Death Row up too. You know, when she well, came in there trying to be the CEO. Oh, really? Yeah, she was doing all kind of dirt. And all that shit. Well, Mich Michelle A has a has a, a baby with with Sh with Dre, and she has a baby with Suge. In the hood, you tell me what is that? Scandalous. So you know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. You know, maybe she fucked Tupac or something. You know what I mean? They got a lot to probably do with it. So you feel that, that up, you know what I'm saying? That Michelle A being with, with Dre before and shit. Yeah, you after. know, I look at a lot of videos and shit that's on YouTube and shit. And I, I gotta find this one video on YouTube where she come in the studio and put her hands all on Tupac's chest and his head and shit. And I'm, I'm looking like, damn, did he get the pussy? You know what I mean? Hmm. So, Suge Knight, Dr. Dre, Tupac. Everything else was cool before then. Dre left. Death Row is still on fire. Yeah. Um, but it's turmoil inside the family, but you wouldn't know it. Okay. But from the outside, it looked like everything was gravy like a motherfucker. But then, but then Tupac gets killed. Shit go haywire. Were you in Vegas? No, we heard about it because they were trying to get us to go to Vegas. And we was like, Dog Pound, we was really on our fuck Death Row shit, really. You know what I'm saying? We was At, already that time. We was already saying fuck death row. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Cause we know we know everybody. You know, so you know me, I was young, I was, you know, feisty. I had fights with Suge Knight, Reggie, everybody. You know what I'm saying? And winning and slamming motherfuckers at a young age. You know what I'm saying? Well, you were having fist fights with Shug. All that shit, slamming his big ass. You know what I'm saying? What were the fights over? Money and other little shit and attitudes and you know. That's why me and him were so close. You and Suge? Yeah, we was close. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So, other little shit like that. Okay, so Krupp was still with Death Row when when Pac got killed, right? Because Krupp said he was the first person to leave after. Yeah, Dre. he left. He was gone already. He was already gone. Yeah, he was gone already. He was in Philly. Okay. Right when Tupac died, yeah. What what happened after after Pac got killed? Shit, everybody started doing their own thing and then it's just turmoil and 
chaos and then, you know, I was like, fuck that, we got too much over here, too many songs, and I was trying to figure out how can I get these songs that we did. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So that's when I became CEO of the Death Row, president and all that other oh, shit. Oh, you became the CEO of Death Row? Like the president. I was running the shit. Okay, and Shug was the CEO? He was in jail. Shug was in, oh yeah, because after the fi- after the, 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 the Vegas thing, he was caught on tape kicking yeah. the dude. And, okay, so you were running Death Row? Yeah, Reggie Wright was running it. Okay, for and how I was long? A, and I was a creative force putting the shit together. What came out under your, your reign? At that time, I mean, I was just putting different songs. They had different songs and shit. I was just, you know, the gridlock soundtrack to make it, um, um, Tupac gang related. Yeah. And then we fell out after that. You and Shook? Yeah, we fell out. What did y'all fall out about? I suckered them for the reels. I went and took all the reels and made it all blanks, rewrote it. The titles on there, and gave them the reels, and I took off with the real masters. Okay, you know what I'm saying. And, and then you left. Death All Row. hell broke, you know. All hell broke with Cause Reggie didn't know nothing about putting the reels on there, listening to the tape, and all that shit, you know. So, so you had the masters from all your shit or everyone's shit? <sighs> shit, all my shit. All your shit. And Tupac shit that I did, you know. What right, saying? you and Tupac had a lot of songs together. Yeah. So I'm gonna start songs that I ain't even heard yet. Right, are they coming out? Because the, they announced that there's a new Tupac project coming. Is there gonna be any, any of your songs? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah? Mm-hmm. Okay. You know what I'm saying? For a long time, you know, me and Michelle A actually talked about this off camera. You know, not that it was private, but she was saying how, you know, people, you know, everyone at Death Row was really crying when Pac got killed. Like, you know, because people are like, oh, you know, there's, there's always the rumor that Suge somehow set him up and something like that, which I thought was always ridiculous. You know? He probably asked that bitch, you pussy. Hey. So you're saying I'm what? fucking Dr. Dre's baby mama. He fucking you. I find out, you know, you getting fucked. What you supposed to do? I mean, you know what? Hey. You put that epidemic together. Hmm. What is that? I'd heard a rumor. Tic-tac-toe, ru- three and a half, you know. <laughs> I mean, w- there was a rumor that Pac wanted to leave Death Row before he was killed. Is that true? If I get into it about the bitch and do all the other shit, I want to leave too. You know what I mean? This bitch fucking shit up. Hmm. You know what I mean? That's how I look at it. She want to put the blame on Dr. Dre busting the nose and all that shit. That's dirty doing a homie like that. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Bitch, you was slanging pussy everywhere. You know what I'm saying? And that was Suge's girlfriend at the time? You know, all it was all sneak shit going on. You know what I'm saying? Money make you fuck anything moving around there. She didn't wasn't liking what Dr. Dre was doing. She wanted to feel some type of way. Suge came in as the big... And then Tupac came and she was so enthused, a star, you know, it's just... You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, it's Gemini's is sneaky. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> okay. hey, you know, you turn your back, but fuck your bitch, you hear me? I'm trying to battle John Cena. Can somebody find John Cena's management? WWE, somebody find John Cena and let's make this happen. So let's be super honest here and I'm gonna be really frank and a little uncouth. I'm not gonna suck a dick unless I'm gonna do it great. I'm not gonna write a book unless I'm gonna do it great. I'm not gonna cook a meal unless I'm gonna do it. I'm not gonna do any, I'm not gonna touch anything unless I plan on doing it better than anyone else you've ever met in your entire life. 